Okay, so this is how to deal with basic SQL or SQL-like tasks if you don't have SQL. But you've got Pandas, and so you've got a lot of resources available to you. So first of all, I'm focused on this directory where I have all, this, all these files, and I'm going to just type Python 3. And if I'm not really sure if I'm in the right directory, well, you know how to do that. So everything's available to us. And so let's go ahead and uh, from pandas frames import everything. So it's going to import everything we need for the first half of this example. <coughs> I've got the PD, pandas is PD, and I have some data frames. And I'm going to look at the data frames one by one and see what they look like. They all have A, B, C, D columns and the last one has BDF columns. And we have the indices here for the first one. Start 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, which would make them very convenient to paste together. So the easiest way to concatenate these guys would be like this and they all come together. Okay, it just happened that we had all the the rows labeled correctly so that that pasting would go well together. But now let's let's think about what happens if we try to have DF1 and DF4 interact with each other instead. So what's in common? Some items but not all. There are columns that are common in B and D, but we could pretend they're different. Look at the primary index in each case. We have rows two and three. So we have a row here at two and three, and that's what we would use as our primary indexing uh, mechanism to say, hey, two and three have more observations. Think of that primary index as a unique person, and then these are all experiences that that person has, and you want to get everything together in, in one row together. So we have a concept called an inner join and an outer join, but first let's, let's just do the easiest thing, which is if you were reading the tutorial I pointed you to, which is where I got these from, well most of these from then they would tell you to paste it this way. Let's see what happens. Uh, so we have row one, zero, one, two, three, and then six and seven, and it does what you would think it would do. What would happen if we flipped that? Instead of pasting uh, DF1, DF4, we just flip that around, see how that makes a difference. So you still get the same information, but the columns are now in different order. Okay, um, so note that axis equals zero is the default, and if you wanted to do that, you just don't put the axis in at all. That's the same thing we did previously. That means that you're pasting top to bottom. Um, and then that means if you want to go in the other direction, that's axis equals 1, which is the second axis, because Python number is 0, 1, 2, 3, so the first thing is 0 and the second thing is 1. It just doesn't make a lot of sense if there's only two things, but if there's more than two things, it makes more sense. Okay. Now, what happens if we wanted to do something like this? Well, let's just not save it yet. Let's do join type equals inner versus outer and see the difference. So inner means I only want to keep the rows where uh, they showed up in both DF1 and DF4, then I want to keep those rows. Outer means I want everything regardless of whether it only showed up in one place or the other place or both places. And so that's something you can do. 
I can save results and then I can just give it a name and I can go right out and look at it. It should be sitting here and I should crack that open with a spreadsheet and say, aha, I captured my data. Good for me. That's great. I should have been able to open this uh, differently. I should be able to say open it so that the, I get the header row. But anyway, that's not a big deal. We can figure that out. Okay. Okay, back to pandas. I'm going to close this down and start over because I want to get the da same data frames, but I want to get it a different way. So I'm going to say import pandas as pd, and now I'm going to read in my data file. I'm going to put in an optional flag that tells it that I want to use the index column as the first column, that is the zeroth column. So if I didn't do this, here's what would happen. It kind of looks dorky because I intentionally created the ID column to be used as the ID. And so it doesn't look like a huge difference, but this means your ID column has a name. As opposed to over here, your ID column doesn't have a name, but you have another column called ID. But this, because it's down here instead of up here, it means it's your primary, uh, your primary key. And so we'll talk about that when we talk about S SQL. So we'll go back to this way of, of looking at the data. Okay, we're going to do the same thing for data frame two. And in each case, I happen to put the index column in position zero, that's not necessary. You can put it anywhere you want. There's other ways of calling it by name instead of calling it by number, but there's so many different things you can get so deep into this. But the point is, I want you to know enough that you can hack around and get what you need to work. Know that these basic techniques are available to you. Okay, so we should have all our data frames now and they're the same ones we had before. Now I added in another data frame and you'll see why in a second. Data frame 5 is the same as data frame 4. I just changed the names of the columns. That's all I did. Okay, so I would like to look at data frame 1 and data frame 4. And I would like to join them and use the join command. But I get a bunch of garbage. Well, too bad. Why? I could join data frame 1 and data frame 5, and if I look at the comments, it says columns overlap, no specified suffix. Oh, how cool. So actually, it means if I simply just go in and manually change the names of the second column, then there's no problem. Or what I could do is I could do the following. I could say something like L suffix equals L and or I could go R suffix equals R. There we go. But I'm not getting all my columns. And I might say, well, what about if I just switch the four and the one around? That'll do it. No, I get different things. Oh, darn. Okay, so I can say how equals outer. So I can use this special flag to say, hey, I want all my data. So I'm starting with DF1 and DF4, and they are, they can have similar names in the columns, but I want to preserve what I want. So just to remove all ambiguity, I'm going to put a suffix for the left, which is DF1, and for the right, which is DF4. And I'm just going to give every column its new unique name. And I'm going to give this guy a name called results. And so I can go results 
to CSV joined data frame CSV. Okay, I'm going to just po poke at this to make sure that this is here. Huh. I should be able to say just use this as from row. don't know why it's not letting me read in the names. I really don't. But we'll figure that out later. Okay. Um, all right. There were a couple other commands I did want to show you. And I guess I did all the same things with DF5. So DF1 join DF5 is fine. And you can still say how equals inner and how equals outer. So <clears throat> same thing. I don't really like the fact that these little nons are, are hanging out over here. I don't really know how to get rid of that, but it's just an artifact. It's because I think because we had in the original DF1, we had um, I'm not really sure why. Actually, I don't get it. I'm not really sure why that happens. Um, hmm. Bizarre. Anyway, it's there, but it's not filled in, so I'm not really worried about it. Okay. I guess that is all I wanted to show you for this session, and uh, see you next time.